you put them on and you click the heels three times and then you said there's no place like home welcome to watch mojo and today we're looking at the most memorable movies that informally continue the story of another but were made by an entirely different production team and are not considered canonical we've previously addressed sequels that are more high profile than their predecessors such as silence of the lamps and we're excluding movies like troll 2 which are completely unrelated to their namesake oh my god Number 10. The Slave Spartacus Stanley Kubrick's Spartacus inspired a new era of Hollywood epics, plus an army of impersonators. I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! The film itself told the mostly true story of a gladiator's revolt against the Roman Republic. But Howard Fast's source novel gave the slave room for liberties with Spartacus's fictional son. Despite landing American distribution with MGM, this Italian production was much smaller than Kubrick's masterpiece. It was still a solid success that has since earned a cult following for its action and informal connection to Universal's classic. Hold this man to the end. And that man too. It's also a satisfying end to bodybuilder Steve Reeves' run of sword and sandal films. While the slave is ultimately no Spartacus, it makes a thrilling claim to that name. Number 9. The Amityville Haunting The Amityville Horror the fabled haunting of a house in Amityville, Long Island was the basis for a cult movie in 1979 that launched a long-running film franchise. You scared Jody. Jody? There's no one here, see? You scared her. She went out the window. Departing from the original series, 2011's The Amityville Haunting was produced and distributed by The Asylum, a company synonymous with straight-to-video mockbusters. The film consists of staged found footage of a family moving to 112 Ocean Avenue. And this is my youngest, Melanie. Hi, Melanie. And we have Sergeant Tyler here. Just don't bother him. He thinks he's the next Steven Spielberg. He oh. films everything. Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> this continuation of that house's lore was as universally panned as any of the asylum's cheap non-efforts. It's nonetheless set a precedent for low-end productions that could get away with ripping off the Amityville brand. Please, I'm locked in. Hello. Stay with me. At least B-horror enthusiasts can rejoice in that. Number 8. The Punisher Dirty Laundry The Punisher Lionsgate alone made two attempts to mount a franchise on Marvel's harshest anti-hero. Now, out the window. What? Out the window. Four years after the Ray Stevenson reboot Punisher Warzone, Thomas Jane reprised the role in a fan-made short film. You like breathing? Usually. Dirty Laundry finds Frank Castle lying low in a bad neighborhood until he ends up cleaning the streets of gangs. In just 10 minutes, the film does more justice to its source material than any of the studio features. It also debuted Tim Bradstreet's iconic logo for The Punisher, and John Bernthal said his portrayal for Netflix was more by Jane in the short. Dirty Laundry may be particularly dressed down for an unofficial sequel, but it hits harder than most fan films. Keep it. Get a hole in it anyway. Number 7. Cruel Jaws Jaws The Revenge Universal's Jaws series began with one of the greatest films ever made and ended with one of the worst. You going after a night? You'll take all day in that bathtub. You got a better idea, man? That is, until a shark attack in Florida ostensibly picked up where Jaws the Revenge left off. The straight-to-video Italian production, Cruel Jaws, was actually made with no involvement from Universal. It was, however, made with a lot of footage lifted from the official movies. Put shark myths around the boundary of the regatta. Inform the Coast Guard to patrol the coast with helicopters and boats. Call in extra officers from nearby counties. 
Shots from other so-called shark exploitation films were also thrown into the mix. This naturally led to legal issues that severely limited the movie's distribution. But after years of underground circulation and home media deals, Cruel Jaws might be due for a resurgence. I want you guys to be careful. If he realizes you're down there, he won't leave you in peace. Lay the charges quickly, light the fuses, and get the hell out of there. According to some, it is at least better than Jaws the Revenge. Number 6. My Sassy Girl 2 – My Sassy Girl The beloved rom-com My Sassy Girl helped bolster international interest in South Korean cinema. Despite its title, My Sassy Girl 2 is in fact one of many loose adaptations. The Chinese production really just rips off the premise of some sad sack getting involved in a volatile love interest's schemes. At least it had the courtesy to credit the original film's writing team. Otherwise, My Sassy Girl 2 is a narratively loose capitalization on a popular title. The poorly received romp didn't fool critics or audiences, but South Korean and Chinese filmmakers did collaborate on an official sequel, My New Sassy Girl, in 2016. <laughs> Number 5. Zombie 2 Dawn of the Dead In 1978, everyone was talking about the sequel to the genre-defining Night of the Living Dead. Oh my god. No chance, forget it, let's get out of here. Wait a minute, they can't get up here. Yeah, and we can't go down there. Let's check it out. Italian audiences knew Dawn of the Dead by the title Zombie. The Italy-based variety distribution thus named their undead thriller Zombie 2 in order to draw domestic audiences. Yes, Doctor. What is all this about the dead coming back to life again and having to be killed a second time? I mean, what the hell is going on here? The movie is actually based more on voodoo zombie lore than George A. Romero's viral outbreak. It was still so full of gore that controversy made it a global phenomenon in its own right. This led to Zombie 3 and an international franchise of unofficial sequels and retitled releases. We have to vaccinate everybody in this region and then spread the news to the rest of the world while there's still time. That's impossible. Our experiments on death one are top secret. You know that perfectly well. If Romero's horror classics concocted the zombie genre, then Zombie 2 and its own ripoffs were integral to the spread. Number 4. Showgirls 2 – Pennies from Heaven – Showgirls Paul Verhoeven's Showgirls went from a critical scandal to one of the great camp classics of the 90s. But Rena Riffle felt her brief role as Penny deserved more spotlight. Have you ever done a lap dance before? No. You gotta talk him into it, okay? 50 bucks a pop, you take him in the back. Touch and go. They touch, they go. With help from Kickstarter, she produced, wrote, directed, edited, and distributed Showgirls 2, Pennies from Heaven. Oh yeah, and she also acted in the titular dancer's rise from a minor character to a burlesque star. Imagine me in Star Dancer. I finally made it. And next. I will rise to be the star dancer. Unfortunately, the two and a half hour long opus received even worse reviews than the legendary bomb before it. It's still hard not to admire the awesome underdog story in its creation. But I don't belong in the kitchen. I belong up there. I'm the star dancer. Whether Riffle's unlikely spinoff will have the same legs as Showgirls, Pennies from Heaven is already enticing an audience. Number 3. Shocking Dark – The Terminator James Cameron brought sci-fi action into the future with The Terminator. Even five years later, Variety Distribution felt they could widen Shocking Dark's audience by marketing it as Terminator 2. They've done it. What is it, Fuller? It's practically DNA. No, it's more like an enzyme that's similar to DNA, completely redesigned by computer. 
What's most shocking is that the movie itself is more of an alien's ripoff. The plot concerns a military raid on a research facility overrun with xenomorph-like monsters. Perhaps the filmmakers respected that the unauthorized Alien 2 on Earth beat them and Cameron to an alien sequel. Concentrate. Try to concentrate on Cliff. Guide him. Stronger force holding me back. International distribution for Terminator 2 was nonetheless limited by its title, even after Cameron cleared up any confusion with T2 Judgment Day. Hasta la vista, baby. Shocking Dark now enjoys a cult following under its original title, albeit largely for its bizarre connection with two sci fi classics. Number 2 Happily Ever After Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Walt Disney Productions gave way to animated feature films with Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. What are you and who are you doing? Uh, uh, what are you? Uh, who are you, uh, my dear? Oh, how silly of me. I'm Snow White. Snow White? The princess? Yes. Filmation associates specifically wanted to explore the and they lived happily ever after part of the story. The company had every right to continue the Brothers Grimm fairy tale and already did so with 1980's A Snow White Christmas. But Happily Ever After was so similar to Disney's aesthetic that the entire production was racked with legal issues. I'm Snow White. Snow White? Our cousins told us all about you. You and the prince were to be married. By the time the film was widely released in 93, Filmation had shut down. Audiences also weren't enchanted with Snow White's journey to rescue her prince. We were separated, and now I'm afraid something horrible has happened to him. I've just got to find him. Still, for all the critical and legal realities, Happily Ever After found its own happy ending as an animation cult classic. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Return to Oz – The Wizard of Oz only Disney could be trusted to recapture the magic of the musical fantasy The Wizard of Oz. 46 years in the making, Return to Oz picks up six months later, with Dorothy Gale returning to an Emerald City in ruins. No, Belina, you don't understand. This was the Yellow Brick Road. It leads to the Emerald City. It's technically just an adaptation of L. Frank Baum's sequel to the book adapted in 1939. However, it lifts so many elements from Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's production that it's widely considered a high-profile ripoff. Just who might you be? What are you doing here? I'm Dorothy Gale. Dorothy Gale. It still wasn't high profile enough to survive critical and box office disappointment. Over the years, though, Return to Oz has won praise for reconciling MGM's masterpiece with a faithfully darker interpretation of Baum's fantasy. You promised that if we guessed correctly. I'm tired of games. I'm tired of all of you. And with the unofficial prequel Oz the Great and Powerful, a cinematic classic lives on with Disney. Which unofficial or unauthorized sequels stood out to you? Feel free to continue our story in the comments. I am coming, Dorothy. Do not worry. I will save you. I am you. I have fried for breakfast. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.